everybody, let's stand to your feet. We're going to worship this morning. Are you guys ready? so faithful. He is a miracle working God. He is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. The same God who parted the Red Sea, the same God who raised the dead. He's here today, and he wants to see you experience the miracle working power that he has for you. That is what we're declaring in this song.
worship you for the miracle. Walking around these walls, I thought by now they fall. For you have never failed me yet. Ooh. Waiting for change to come. Knowing the battles won. For you have never failed me yet. Yeah. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never
Casting our crowns down before his throne this morning. We join with heaven to sing that he is worthy of all the praise and all adoration. To you alone, Lord, nothing else really matters.
to do whatever you want to do. And I will make room for you to do whatever you want to to do whatever you This is my surrender. Here is where I lay it down. You are all I'm chasing. This is my surrender. This is my surrender. Lord, we just give it all to you today. Amen. Amen. My name is John, my wife and Chris and I are the pastors here, and I just want to welcome you. We're delighted you're with us today. Won't you find a couple of people around you and tell them they smell good and they look better? Come on, find some folks. Yeah. You may be seated. Well, uh, today we're in for a little treat because my wife, Kristen's going to join me for the teaching today. Hey, hey. Yeah, let's just go. I got it. Thank you. Yeah. I'm keeping him on his toes, guys. <laughs> <laughs> you notice that I brought up another table because yes, this right here, do you see all that? Mm-hmm. So I, on the way to church today, I noticed that she was carrying all of her Bibles, and I thought, Lord, we're going to have to get another table up there. <laughs> Because one Bible ain't good enough. <laughs> hey, we really are glad you're with us today. Again, I'm John. This is my wife, Kristen. We've been married for 30 years. And we've, we've yeah, I know, that's a long time. Uh, and, and, and we've been in ministry for all of those years together. Have, yeah. uh, Kristen is, has a doctor of pharmacy. And uh, she laid that down uh, to, to go into ministry and to raise our boys. And uh, I can tell you there's no greater. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> thanks yeah, for thanks. paying that college yeah. tuition. <laughs> thanks, I appreciate Di- it. <laughs> thanks, Diane, for those six, seven years of college. Boomer Sooner, by That's the way. Right. Uh, Anybody so- in here a Sooner fan? Oh, you Texas. Oh, Thank there we you. Go. There's my people. One. That's awesome. For those that don't care, OU yeah. played Texas and they hate each other, and OU won it's yesterday. A, it's a so. big rivalry. And we we want to welcome you online today. Thanks again for joining us. And if you are a first time guest here at the Hills, and I do see some new faces, I would love for you at some point today, there's a connect card that's on the seat back right in front of you. At some point today, if you'll take that out and fill that out and let us know how we can pray for you. Uh, Kristen uh, takes these home and she, she prays over them personally. So if you have a, a need or a situation that you want us to pray about, please let us know. And then all, again, for all of, our, all of our faithful folks, thank you for being here today. And I want to thank you for your continued giving. It helps us, it helps us do what God's called us to do. And uh, you can give online. You can, you can give as you leave today. There's some uh, giving boxes there as well. Well, are you all ready for the word today? Yeah. How about the rest of y'all? Y'all here for what? What do y'all here? You should be really ready for it with Kristen up here, no <laughs> doubt. Uh, we're in a series called Elements where we've been, we've been talking about uh, the, just the practical, the basic things that it takes to be uh, a Christ follower. And it's, uh, Chris and I got to talking uh, several months ago as we were planning for the series, and it's amazing that we are in the buckle of the Bible Belt, and yet there are so many people that don't know some of the basic things about, about being a Christ follower. And so we spent the first two weeks talking about loving God and loving your neighbor as yourself. Uh, last week, Dr. Dan Boone was here, and what a great word he spoke on, on just being a generous person, uh, not being a greedy individual. And then today, we want to dive in on one uh, that is, is special to our heart, and it's about prayer. We want to talk about prayer today. Everybody say prayer. Before we do dive in, I do want to say we've got something exciting coming up. I forgot to announce it. I see it on your I hear you want to say it? 
You go ahead. Uh, October 29th, uh, on, uh, on Sunday evening, we have a family fall fest. So uh, bring all the kids back. It'll be fun. Go eat be, some lunch and come back. Go eat yeah. some lunch. It'll be fun. We'll have, a, have some games for the kids and lots of stuff going on. That'll be a, a blast. So that's happening. And oh, one more thing. Uh, two weeks ago, our Welcome to Church Social, we had 40 brand new folks show up for our Welcome to Church Amazing. Social. About Amazing. About calling the hills their home. Come on, that's exciting. 40 people. That's big time. <laughs> It's healthy, healthy growth. So um, John has had, I think you had something that you felt was on your heart for a couple of weeks to speak about today when you knew that. Well, yeah, I, I was going to speak on something else. Yeah, yeah, and you just couldn't settle on it. And I was, um, I was at Walmart yesterday, which is where I got these pants, by the way, $14. Go get you some. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I was supposed to be shopping for groceries. I don't know how I got over in that section. but The Lord led her over to the section. <laughs> They're stretchy. I mean, you can't go wrong. Um, and I was, I was pushing the buggy, and uh, I just I felt the Lord say, how about, you just, how about you just talk tomorrow at church? How about you share what I've taught you, some things that I've taught you? And, and I called John because I knew he was really struggling with what he was going to do today. And I said, how about we just get up there and, and share from our heart and do some corporate discipleship, if you will. I feel like, I feel like we're all, we're, we're hungry and, and we're in a place where when I look at you and I know myself, we're here today because we need something from God. Like we don't, we're not here because we need something else to do. We're definitely busy and all of us are busy and I just feel like we are all hungry for God, and we want more of God. And I got to say, I'm proud to go to a church that is in that position, that you're, you're seated in that place of hunger uh, that you want to learn. And I'm, I'm proud of y'all for that because I really feel that, and I feel you pulling that out of me and out of us. So um, he said, well, I was just thinking that we should talk about prayer tomorrow. So this is fresh. This is something that, <laughs> that we haven't been... Um, you know, I study, I, I, you know, when I, when I do a message series, I, I'll study six to seven weeks out. I, yeah. I get way ahead. Not like me. Yeah. <laughs> not yeah. like my wife. Yeah. Not like uh, me. I, I'll get way out there. And so I had already had it planned what I was going to speak on today and just could not feel settled in my heart. And especially as a pastor with what's going on in our world, what is happening in Israel right now, uh, I want to be really sensitive to what the Holy Spirit is speaking. And I just don't want to show up and just, well, I got this in the can, so I've already studied and prepared for it. And so I just felt like today prayer was, prayer was just very important for us to talk about. And I want to, I want to start by reading Matthew 6. And when Jesus says to them, when you pray, this is how you need to pray. So if anybody's going to teach us about prayer, I'd say we should listen to him. Amen. He said, in this manner, therefore pray, and this is from the New King James Version, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory. And everybody say, amen. amen. And in reality, what Jesus was doing here, he wasn't just teaching us how to pray. He was also teaching us how not to pray. If you will look at the context of this passage, he's talking about how people pray. And if you read through Matthew 6, before this and after this, he said, don't do this, do this. And so I feel like, uh, Chris and I talked about it yesterday that prayer can really be a, um, it's a, it's a word that, uh, it just, uh, it's polarizing because some people don't feel like they know how to do it. Some people feel like they got a corner in the market so true. on how to do it. Yeah. And a lot of times I find that people that quote, know how to pray, I'm intimidated by them. No, because I I'm still I'm 54 and I'm still trying to figure it out. Yeah, and I really I'm I'm big on this this morning. I want to dismantle all of those myths, all of those lies, because if you can talk, which most of us can, if you can listen, that's harder. But if you can talk uh -huh. and you can listen, then you can have a conversation with God, and that's what prayer is. Yeah, that's great. So those of us that that I know for me, um, when I married John and. 
I never would have thought. I knew I was, I knew God had called me. I knew that from the time I was five years old. I didn't know what that looked like. It was almost laughable that I was going to be a pastor's wife because I did not get the rule book. I, I wasn't a typical, still not, and that's okay, whatever that is. I don't know what that is. But I do know that I would compare myself or I would say, oh, she knows how to reach heaven or her prayers are effective. And that's true. It's great to know people and to admire that and to have mentors. But, you know, I, I really think that the enemy wants to keep us from knowing that we all can pray. Yeah. We all can talk. And we all can listen, right? So I want, I want to really, really drive that home well, today. I think that's great because really, yeah. in reality, if you're taking notes, write this down. Prayer is a conversation. That's what prayer is. Prayer is us talking to him and him talking to us. Great conversations are built because of great relationships. But you can't have a great relationship without having conversations. I'm going to say that again. To have a great conversation with someone, it's because you have a good relationship with them. There's a place you can go with someone you know that you can't go. So that's where great conversations come from a great relationship. But you cannot have a great relationship without conversation. Prayer, as Kristen said, is talking. And, and I read it. In this manner, he said, pray you. In the NIV, it says to them, when you pray, say. Everybody say that. Say. You have to say something. You have to, it has to come out of your mouth. Now, for some people, they pray in their head. That's okay. But there's something powerful about speaking it out loud. For example, if I just always thought, man, I love her in my head just all the time. She is so beautiful. But I never said it. I never spoke it out. Like the one guy said, I told her I loved her when I married her. Why, well, I got to say it again. That was a great relationship, I'll Ooh, tell you. I want to be married to him. <laughs> she told me the other day, she said, I don't know what I would do if I was married to someone that didn't have the gift of encouragement. Oh, my gosh. Because yeah. it's an everyday thing. It you is. are just gorgeous. I should have a head this big. <laughs> like, <laughs> Sometimes I think she gets tired of it, you know. Uh. Uh, but what if I just thought it and I never said, I appreciate what you do around the house. My favorite thing about Kristen is she has a way of making everything better and more beautiful. Just she does. You walk in our home, it's always going to smell good. And you look, I look for the little Easter eggs, like little things. My favorite thing about her is when I give her flowers, she'll have her flowers, she'll put them there. But then a little, a few days later, I'll find a little bitty vase about this big. <laughs> and it'll be the little flowers that have fallen off. And she's put those in yeah, there. Yeah. Well, what if I never told her that? And it's the same thing with our relationship with God. He wants to hear us. He wants mm. us to talk to him. The Bible says he would come in the cool of the garden, and he would walk with Adam, and they would have conversation. It's a conversation. It doesn't have to be something that we're... And I grew up around, not necessarily my family, but in ministry where it was, if you don't pray an hour a day, hour a day, you have not done enough. I mean, you better pray an hour, and it better be praying. I mean, getting after it, you know, and I just, for years, would just feel so guilty, but saying it, just starting by talking to him, yeah. it starts, everything that we know started with a word, and God said, said, said. let there be light. It starts by the power of the spoken word. And I found this in Psalms just a few minutes ago, Psalms 27, 8. My heart has heard you say, come and talk with me. We've, my heart, all of our hearts, I believe, have heard something like that voice or that nudge or that whatever it is that you, you call it. That's God saying, come and talk with me. And then in the Psalms, it says, my heart responds, Lord, I am coming. I can't imagine what he must feel or think when we say, okay, Lord. I heard you. I'm coming. <laughs> and um, we don't have to have it all together. We just, we need to be available. We need to be ready. We need to, this is none of this. Again, I'm here to dismantle that guilt, that shame. Like, it's just, okay, God. Can you talk? I hear you. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> First of all, I acknowledge, I hear my heart, my heart has heard you. I'm coming. Lord, I'm coming. Um, go ahead. 
And I think, and if I start talking and you're not done. Oh, just, I, I got the mic. I can. Okay, that's right. Do, yeah. Dear Jesus. You notice we didn't give her the one that goes here, so we can take it away <laughs> if we need to. Uh, you know, it's important to, I think, sometimes we get the talking part, but I don't know that we get the listening part. And that is as much a part of prayer as the talking part is the listening. It is. Uh, you know, praying is not just quiet time. It is a time to talk, but it's also not just talking time. After we talk, then that's the time that we listen to him, mm -hmm. to hear his voice. And how, how do we hear his voice? Some people don't know how to, how to hear his voice. First of all, his word. His word will speak to you. That's why it's so important for you to read his word mm -hmm. when you pray. Mm -hmm. And I know people that just pray his word mm -hmm. and read his word. His, he will speak to you. And I, will, I find that one day I'll read a passage of scripture and I'll read it the next day and see something I didn't even see the day before. It's true. Yeah. That's the word speaking to me. It's alive. It's breathing. It's doing surgery on me. It's, it's doing mending on me. It's washing me the word. Also, his spirit, Holy Spirit will speak to you. It, it may not be audible. If you get an audible word from God, I want you to tell me about it. That is amazing. I, I mean, that's, that would be incredible. I've never heard the audible voice of God, but I know what his voice sounds like in me. I know I can, it's this, it's this feeling, it's this, it's this, it just drops, and you know that you know that you know that you know. That's right, that's right. And it's more than just intuition. Right, it, it's, I think we, and I do think that we pass it off that in our culture, um, human nature is to say, well, that's just womenly intuition, like all women have that, or whatever it is, it's not. And again, that's another way that I think the enemy wants to take away this special time of prayer that we can have with God all the time, at any time, whenever you want to. It's available all the time. So I can see why he, the enemy would want to take that from us, to discredit, eh, that's not the Lord. I think when I say, you know, when the Lord says, or when in Psalms where it says, I heard the Lord, or the, my heart felt that, I think we all can, I see you nodding, like we know what that is. We know the difference in that. And as you grow, and one reason we're doing this teaching on elements is as you, as you're a disciple, become a disciple, discipleship, discipline, as you grow in that, you learn that voice more and more. You know exactly what it is and when it is, and, and, and it, that's where we begin to mature. And I think uh, uh, the other way that God speaks to you is through your pastors, God will speak to you. It's amazing to me that I, God will give me a message, give us a word that we're speaking to, you know, several hundred people, and I'll have people come up to me afterwards and go, you were talking to me. And typically I'll say, well, your name was in my title, so <laughs> that's a joke. It wasn't. Uh, but, by the way, but, Crystal said it's a Pastor Appreciation Day. Is that right? So really? I appreciate you. Oh, well, I appreciate you. Thank you, Crystal, for telling Shake me Shake hands. That. I appreciate you. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> I love you guys. I don't know what that means, but she, thank you for wishing me. <laughs> I'll have to day. figure out when to appreciate your pharmacist day is, and oh, I'll appreciate well, yeah, you, Crystal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's a, if, you don't, if you don't know uh, Crystal, uh, they've been attending our church since we're outside, I think, right? Yeah. Uh, and one day, I, one day I, after church, I went over, and this is when everybody was still wearing masks. And I walked over to get a prescription, and, and, and Crystal was waiting on me, and she had a mask on, and she goes, really enjoyed the sermon today. Said, oh, Jesus, help me. <laughs> you never know when people are watching. <laughs> and ended up marrying them a, a, a few months, about a year later. So, all right, let's jump, okay, let's sorry, jump back that, on That's this. me. I did that. Okay. <laughs> um, I, I think that I, I'm probably jumping ahead, but um, I think that we all believe that we can trust God, that God loves us. That's why we're here today. Um, we, like John said, we have his word that tells us that. His word actually can, if you don't know what to pray, you can open this up and you can look in here and find some things to pray. I just saw this too this morning. You've heard the law. This is in Matthew 5, 43. You've heard the law that says, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. There's, that's, oh, there's, there's a good, I know, that's a hard one. And I've, I've prayed for a lot of people over the last 
several years like that that they we have a real enemy by the way guys and when you start to pray for people that meant evil for what God meant for good this gives us a, like we have something to do right <laughs> We have a lot to do, actually. So he gives us things to pray. He doesn't just say pray. And before I'm going to talk to anybody, this is what I love about God. Before I'm going to open up to anyone and tell them my stuff, there's someone in this room that I've done that with before when my dog died. Terry came to my aid, and I was not in a good place at all. But before I knew I could call her, I knew I could trust her. I knew that I could trust her with my ugliness, with my, my stuff, right? And I think that's huge that we understand that God loves us, that we can trust him. I'm not going to open up to just anybody. That's right. Are you? I mean, that, it's hard to know who to trust, right? And so I think if we're going to be vulnerable, that we have to know that we can trust God when we talk to him. When we pray, that's prayer. Remember, that's prayer. We have to understand that we're not just talking at God. I, I'm really guilty of talking at Him, like God. It says in Your Word, da, 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 like I'm, you know, or You say, da, 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 but I'm not feeling it. Or I, I wake up and it, it says all is well in my journal, and I'm like, it's not well. Like I don't really feel like all. <laughs> Is well, And then I start to talk at him. That's not what he wants. He wants us to say in a conversation, God, it's not well. Like, it's just, this is where I'm at. That is what he wants from us. Yes. He doesn't expect us to have all of these scriptures memorized and tell them back. He knows he is the word. He was the word. He came among us. He walked and he lived. He became the word. He already knows all this stuff, guys. He wants us to have a conversation with us. And so we can know, we can read, we can talk, we can come to church, and we can know all about him. But do we know him? Are we in relationship with him enough to talk to him? And I think yeah, I, I, that's, that, that is, is big. I, you know, I have, I won't, we won't get through them all today, but I have this thing called the, the P's of prayer that we go through the Lord's Prayer. And the first P is parent. That's the very first prayer, our Father, to see him as someone you have a relationship with. When you start with that, our Father, it starts that by saying, you are someone I can trust. Now, some of you had a great relationship and have a great relationship with your Father, and so that's easy for you. There are others here that did not and do not have a great relationship with your father. You matter about you probably wouldn't even want to see God in that way. That's why it says our father who art in my heavenly father. I'm changing that concept that you're not just my daddy, which I can trust my dad. I know that I can. So I'm speaking to someone that I can trust, but it's more than that. You are my heavenly father. Jesus said, if you be an earthly parent, know how to give healthy gifts to your children. How much more does your heavenly father want to give you those gifts? James says, every good and perfect gift comes down from heavenly father, the, our heavenly father, the, and there is no shadow of turning. So when you and I pray, he gives us good gifts. And it may not be the gifts we want. It's true. Amen. And it may not be the gifts we want right now. Or we think we need. Or we think we need. Yeah. But he gives good g gifts that are good for us. That's right. And, so and speaking parent. of parenting, all of those of you that are parents, grandparents in this room, you know uh, when you're raising children and even when they're grown adults, sometimes you wake up in the middle of the night and you are worried sick. Where are they? What's going on? How are they? Did they bring a jacket? I know he's 25, but does he, did he put a jacket on this morning? It's 55 this morning, uh, Evan. And um, he did. He did. Uh, I do. If it's not about parenting, it's about something. We all we all have, I know I do, wake up in the middle of the night, or maybe it's in the morning for you, and worry. It, it just is, cons it's all consuming. You have racing thoughts. You can't stop the thoughts. You don't know. You didn't even go to bed with them, but you woke up with them. And in Philippians 4, 6, it says, 
don't worry about anything. Pray about everything. And I got to say, this is a hard one for me. I'm practicing this as I tell it to you. I have not perfected it. But one thing I know is that he's right there waiting on me to come to him about it. He already knows. He already knows the future. He knows what's going to happen, the things that I'm thinking about. Actually, he knows that. He knows my thoughts. Mm. Thank God his thoughts are not my thoughts. His thoughts are higher. higher. His thoughts always take me higher. They always elevate. They always take the situation and they turn it into something better than I had it turning out to be. Um, that's a good one. If Can y'all I jump are, on that real quick? Yeah, go ahead. And that's the second P is position. Oh, I set you up for you that. Set one, me up, I? girlfriend. Yeah. Position. My father who art in heaven. Yeah. To see him in that place where he is, as Christian said, his thoughts are not like my thoughts. They're higher than mine. Uh, he said, as, as high as the heavens are above the earth, so yeah. are my thoughts Jesus. above yours, and so are my ways above your ways. So when we begin to pray to our heavenly Father, we need to understand that his thoughts are more elevated than our thoughts. Mm. His thoughts are more eternal than our thoughts. They, he thinks like heaven thinks, whereas you and I, we pray in this little span of time, right, whether it's five minutes, five years, 50 years. I've been praying for this long and it still hadn't been answered. God doesn't see our lives in that span of time. Mm. God sees it from an elevated perspective, so he sees every bit of it and he sees it from an eternal perspective. So when he answers our prayers, it's never going to be for what we want right then. It's going to be for what's best for us. Come on, can I hear a hills amen? (laughs) So I think what our job is to do is to find a way to present those things to him because he he wants to hear from us we've established that we know that he loves us he loves us he loves us he loves us if we can just get that right just get that right. I'm, I'm getting that right in this last season of my life I got to tell you understanding how much he really loves us has changed my entire way of living for him the things that I would say, the things that I still say to myself, about myself, to myself, the way that I talk to myself, it's not the way that he talks to me. He loves you so much. Understanding that will change the way you approach him. It'll change the way that you present things to him. I love, we don't think about when we have a care, just like throwing it at somebody, right? Like, like just, <laughs> but that's what he says. He says, cast all of your cares on me. He wants us to do that. We're not trouble. I know for years I thought, especially marrying a preacher, I thought, uh, God, you got way bigger things than me. Like, I'll, I'll take care of that. And you deal with the bigger things. Like I'm good. And so I, I like would give him the Heisman, right? Like, God, you're, you're busy. I don't need to bother you. No, he wants us to do that. He wants us to give him our cares. And another thing that I want to say that I do is I try to like, I make it sometimes a business transaction with God because it's daily, right? And I don't get it right every day. None of us do, I don't think. If you do, I want to talk to you too. Those of you that heard Audible and that, (laughs) I want to know. I'm serious. I want to learn from you. Um, We try to like close that business deal, right? Like we close that deal. All right, God, we got it done. We know what to do. All right, got it. Shut the door. All right, we're good. That is, we can't talk at him, like I said earlier. We can't, God is not a business deal. He is our father. Come on. He is the lover of our souls. He wants to be with us. And for me to wrap my brain around that, I'm still working on, that the God of all creation wants to spend time with me, Mm. and you don't realize it until you give him a chance. Like, just give him a try. Just try it. Just try and see how much he loves you. Just spend five seconds. Like, carve out some time. Make some some space. I think we sang about that today. Make room for him in your life. That's why we need to get up in the morning or that we want to get up in the morning, not because we have to or we have a business deal or we got that transaction with God, we've got to close by 9 a.m. so we can get on with our day, but so that we have space, like John said, so that we can talk, but also so we can wait and we can listen to what he's saying, whether it's through the word 
or something that he impresses on our heart. Um, what's that old song? Um, what is that? Uh, I think I wrote it down. Oh, oh, what peace we often forfeit. How many have heard that? Oh, what needless pain we bear, right? I can't sing, but all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. We forfeit the peace that God died for, for us to experience. Barry and I were talking. I don't know where he and Lola, his dog, went, but he's in here somewhere. Like, how often we forfeit that peace that God desires for his children to live in. Do you know that's our Father that loves us? He desires for us to live in peace. Um, go ahead. And I think, you know, for a lot of folks, it's like, well, I don't have time to pray. Do you take a shower? Do you take a bath? Do you, uh, you have a, a commute? Is there, there's a time. There's a time for prayer. And I think sometimes, it's like Kristen said, I mean, how much, how much time would you and I forfeit for peace and for joy and for hope? It's not transactional, but there is a transaction that happens when you begin to cast your cares mm -hmm. upon him mm -hmm. because he, he cares for you. you and Jesus. I think you can take any time, and, and that, that's the third, the third P, of the Lord's Prayer is praise. Praise. When you say, our Father who's in heaven, hallowed be your name, or holy is your name. What he was saying is, what you're telling him at that moment is, out of all the conversations I'm going to have today, this one's holy. This one is special. And that doesn't mean, it doesn't matter if you're driving in a car, if you're taking a shower, whatever it is. When, you're, when you take that moment and you go, Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. I want you to know this one is sacred. I'm setting time aside for you and I have a conversation together. And once you say that, then that becomes, it's like, it's like uh, attorney-client privilege or it's like pastoral client. That conversation becomes a special conversation between you and your heavenly father. And I can hear some of you, and I know people, and I feel like maybe as humans, we might all have done this at one time, but that we have that fear of abandonment, right? Or what if God, like, what if he does like everybody else does, and he's just not there? What if I can't trust him? What if I can't rely on him? What if he's not hearing me? What if he's not listening? What if there, and it says in Psalms 145, 18, the Lord is close. To all who call on him. Come on. What is that Psalm? 145, 18. Write that down. The Lord is close to, to all. To all who call on him. Oh, man. Um, he hears their cries. I could read all of this. He hears their cries for help. And guess what he does? It says in his word, he rescues them. I love that. So he's never going to leave you. He's always, always, always going to be there for you. He is not human. He is God. And a lot of times we, we give God that baggage of what other people have done to us. And I understand that. that is, that's real. That's real pain. That's real hurt. That's real grief. But God is always going to be there when you call on him. He's always going to be close to all who call on him. Write that down. Psalms 145, 18. So good. Yeah. Why don't we try to get through these? Can we get through them, you think? Oh, I didn't even know Just you so had... you can write them down? Sure. How's that sound? The, the P's of, of prayer. And okay. maybe I'll, I'll come back and speak on them more. Sure. Uh, the next one is permission. Your kingdom come. Will be your done. will. Let me bring them up here. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. So here's the permission part of prayer is that, that I'm going to pray according to your will. kingdom. Oh, kingdom. And according to your will. Your kingdom and your will. Matter of fact, if you want to write this down, I call the four perimeters of prayer oh, kingdom and will and power and glory. See the bottom right down here? So up there, kingdom and will and power like boundaries. and glory. What's that? It's kind of like boundaries. It is. It's pray. like these four parameters of prayer that when I pray, I'm asking you to do this, but only if it helps set up your kingdom, only if it's your will, only if it gives you glory, and only if it displays your power. 
That's pretty good, amen? I don't care who your preacher is. That's pretty good. <laughs> Lord, I, I want this to have according to your will. James says this, your prayers are not answered because you pray amiss. Remember, he says you miss the mark. You, you miss the target because you're praying for your own, what, what you want to see happen in your own life instead of God. I want, more than anything, I want your kingdom set up. More than anything, I want your will to be done. I want your power displayed, and I want, I want people to see your glory. I think even that, that scripture, because um, my mom and dad taught me the word of God. And so even praying amiss, there were years that I thought, oh, I'm probably praying amiss. I'm probably not praying the right thing. <laughs> right? We, we get really religious sometimes. And he would, let me just say this, he would rather you pray than not pray at all. He would rather you talk to him, and then y'all can figure out, you know, if you're praying amiss or not. <laughs> right. So I don't want I, that to discourage. No, I'm not saying no, no, I hear you, you but meant I think, that. I think that amiss, that miss is when it's a selfish prayer. Mm -hmm. And matter of fact, that word amiss is actually translated diseased. So your prayers become diseased. So you know if you're praying a selfish prayer. Come on, can I hear an amen? You know it. And no matter how bad I want something in my life, I want him to know I want his will more than it. I mean, think about this. Jesus himself said in the last, his, his prayer to the Father in the garden, I don't want to do this. I don't want to go to the cross. If you can do this, take it away from me. So he was saying, I want you to take, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. So pray the prayers, but wrap it up with according to your will, Lord. Amen. So permission, and then there's next is give us this day our daily bread. This is provision. This is, I pray for provision in my life. And I notice we go through the praise, and we go through making sure he knows that it's about his will and his permission, and that's when I ask for provision. And this is, everybody say daily bread. Daily. It's a daily thing where I, I, I ask him, give me what I need right now, today. You know what tomorrow holds. I don't know. And that's why the flowers of the field don't worry about tomorrow. That's why the, the birds don't worry about tomorrow, because they know right now is what matters, my daily bread. I also call this the manna method, when God brought manna down for Israel, and he told them, he said, this is only for today, don't store it up for tomorrow, this is right now, and when they would try to store it up is when it would become diseased and moldy and malignant, and so it's a daily prayer. Give me what I need right now. I had a, a, a guy that we pastored years ago that said, the problem with life is it's just so daily. Amen. <laughs> it's a daily thing. So there is that, that provision. And, and I think, too, that we have to rem I have to remember that the things that he knows that we need are not always the things that we think we need. Yeah. And I can't tell you in this last I say season of our lives. Um, I, I woke up one morning and God blessed our, our church with uh, landscaping. It's not what I would have picked money uh, or chosen to spend money on. Uh, I would rather, you know, keep, keep this going. But God, God put it on a lady's heart that goes to this church to take care of our landscaping. She took me to the best nursery here in Nashville, and she said, I want you to pick whatever it is you want. And she was, she was so generous. And she would see my eyes and go, you want that, don't you? And I'd say, no, 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 that's the expense. Oh, no, let's go over here and get this one. And she blessed this church with landscaping. So what you see out there, I mean, I didn't think we needed that, but I can't tell you how much I love flowers and how much I love landscaping and how much I love driving up and seeing like God knew that was a gift to me. Yes. Um, he, I, not a few months ago, my son had his first grand mal, grand mal seizure. And I had to drive him around for six months because he couldn't drive until he was cleared of not having another seizure. He decided that he was going to get braces. So I took him to his orthodontist. And at one of those appointments last January, I filled out this raffle thing, which... I never win anything, so it's like, why not? Actually, what drew my attention to it was there was a bunch of candy at a dentist's office. <laughs> How cool is that? Like all the Almond Joys and Reese's, and you remember that? Oh. Uh, 
He did. He <laughs> said to me, he's like, Mom, why are you filling that out? I said, I don't know, the candy. I don't know. I just, and so I filled it out, and I stuck it in there, and I get a call about a month ago, baby? Yeah, a month ago, and they said once a year they draw a name out of this raffle, and they choose to give away free orthodontic for life, like to whoever they draw, and it was me. Okay, I mean. Getting in teeth fixed. See, the, see that gap? I don't have, that gap going to be gone. Oh, I love I the know, gap. I know, but I'm going to get, like, free. I told her I love the gap because you don't have one. That's right. All the people, by the way, I can't tell you the people that have come to me and say, don't get rid of that gap. I'm like, I'm looking at your Hollywood bumper, and you're telling me not How to How about you go and get a gap, that's, that's okay? Right. So I remember I told John one morning, I said, I can't tell you, like, God has just given me the cherry on top. And I'm just asking him, God, just give me a scoop of vanilla, please. Give me the cake. Just give us, just help us just keep going, please. And his desire, again, his ways are so much higher. They're so much bigger than we are. I don't know why he thinks we need landscaping or why I need, you know, to fix this gap in my teeth. But he loves us that much. He loves you that much. And if we're not in that time with him, if, we're, if we, miss, we miss out on the relationship, the love that our father, I keep going back to that because that is everything, the way that he loves us. And so when we're talking about provision, I know you're still on your notes. I'm good. Okay. Uh, don't worry about my notes. When we're talking about daily bread, let's be open to what it is and, and maybe thank him. Like I, the next morning, I was like, God, I'm so sorry. I was like, why didn't I just say thank you? Yes, Thank you for free orthodontics. Thank you for the $6,000 Invisaligners that I would have never paid for. And the lab fee. And the, all the stuff, right? And the flowers. And the plants. And the magnolias. Yes. That I drive up to and I see and it blesses me. That's Thank so you, wonderful. God. Thank you, God, for the provision. Amen. Amen. Our That's daily a good bread. word. And then the next one is uh, pardon. For, forgive us as we forgive others. Pardon. He forgives us, and it says, as we, that's a scary one, isn't it? As we forgive others. It's very important. R1 translation says, forgive us like we forgive others. And there's a great passage of scripture where where a king, a master, comes to a a servant and says, you owe me money, I'm going to throw you in jail. And the servant says, please forgive me, and the servant Father forgives him, master forgives him, he goes right out, finds someone that owes him a little bit of money. And I looked it up the other day, a theologian said it would be like that guy owing the master a billion dollars and him going to find a guy that owes him 10 and wouldn't forgive that debt. And so the master comes and says, okay, then now I see how you are and puts him in jail. How easy is it for us to ask forgiveness but not offer forgiveness? And I think if we can start by praying, for those enemies. Praying for them. Then we can learn to forgive them too. You know, I, when uh, we, we went through a, a season where the Lord was really retooling and redialing me, and uh, yeah, I've, I've spoken on this, that, I've, that the Lord revealed to me that I had pride in my life, and I didn't really think I was a prideful person until he began to show me some things in my life, and I had harbored a uh, hurt, and he gave me specific people to go to and ask their forgiveness. And ironically, it was people that I thought really should be asking of my forgiveness. And instead, I went and asked them, would you forgive me of anything I did to hurt you? And it was amazing how instantly those relationships, it was just like, wow. And what's ironic is hardly any of those people asked it back in, in return. But would you forgive me? And, but that wasn't what God asked me to do. He asked me to go ask forgiveness. Of them. And that's and, what you're responsible for. And that was my responsibility. And so yeah. forgive. So it, when you ask God to forgive you, that's a good check to go, okay, am I offering that forgiveness? Yes. You know what that word forgiveness means? It means to give for. Mm. So you don't hold. It'd be like you breaking a, a lamp in my house and me saying, don't worry about it. I hold it against you when you leave. That's not forgiveness. Forgiveness is when I go and spend the $40 to replace the exact lamp that you broke. That's a cheap lamp. I'm, <laughs> well, it was my lamp. Okay. You and your Walmart pants over there. Right? By the They're way, stretchy, y'all, check, you old people, check out my hush puppies. Y'all like them? <laughs> I'm bringing them back, baby. Hush puppies. 
<laughs> Y'all, I got to say that I know this is not a sermon. I know he's not up here, but this is church, okay? Us talking about real things, and I'm not saying when he preaches, I it's think not. it's a great sermon, by the way. No, yeah, yeah, but, um, and thank you guys for listening. This is, this is something that I believe we all deserve to hear, and we all yes. deserve to know, and we all are loved by the Father, and we all, it's his desire that all of us should know him. It's his desire that we mm. all should come to repentance and that he would love us and that he would forgive us and that we could live a free life, that we could be free from the things that hold us back, from the things that held me back, from the things that he wants to give us, that he desires to give. Like you said, a father, somewhere in the world, I, I can't find it, but somewhere it says that a, a father doesn't give his child a snake. Like, what parent would give? You ask for a fish, he if, if won't you, give you a snake. That's it, okay. You ask for an egg, he won't give you a stone. Or bread, he won't give you a stone. Okay. He won't do that, but he will give you good gifts. Amen. He, The father of lights desires to give you. Amen. That's so good. I got two more P's. So good, Beth. Okay. PP. Got two more P's, all right? Beep. The next one is Protection. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Look at me. We have an enemy. And he is, the Bible says he is like a roaring lion seeking for someone to devour. He's looking. He wants to. Jesus told Peter, he said, he wants to sift you like wheat. He has come to steal, kill, and destroy. We have an enemy. And, and the scripture says that, that the Lord will rebuke the devourer for our sake. That's what we pray for, Father. And, and I also love that the Bible tells us for every temptation that we have, God always offers a way of escape. So that's when we pray, Father, don't lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil or deliver us from the evil one. And then finally, there's proclamation. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Everybody say forever. Forever. I close that prayer out by saying everything that I've just offered up to you, you can do whatever you want to because you've got all the power, you've got all the glory, and, and, and yours is the kingdom. I've already said I want your will to be done. And so I close it out with that proclamation. Everybody say amen. 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 Our Father. You, we don't sing the same. Which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom For you, Gwen. and the power and the glory forever. Ah, amen. And let all God's people say amen. I can do that. <laughs> I want us, I would be remiss if I didn't close out us talking about prayer and not encourage you to pray for Israel. No matter what your political position is on nations, it is very clear in the Bible that we are called to pray for the health, the safety, and the security of Israel. And I want to tell you that I have been really moved by what has gone on the past uh, 24 hours. Uh, it, this, is, this is a terrorist attack. Uh, this, is, this is war that's going on. 
right now. It is not by chance, it is not by chance that this is the 50-year anniversary of the Yom Kippur War. And the Bible very clearly tells us when you begin to see wars and rumors of wars, it's not time for God's people to get scared. It's time for us to look up because our Savior's coming. Amen? Amen. Lift your head up. Psalms tells us, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And you can write this down, Psalms 122, 6 through 9. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May all who love this city prosper. O Jerusalem, may there be peace within your walls and prosperity in your palaces. For the sake of my family and my friends, I will say, may you have peace. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek what is best for you, O Jerusalem. Genesis 12 and 3 says, I will bless those who bless you. I will curse those who treat you with contempt. All families on the earth will be blessed through you. And so as the pastor of the hills, I want to tell you, I want to encourage you to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. That God would stand with Israel during this time. And how do we find peace? It's a pop quiz. Anybody? In his presence. In his presence. That's, how, that's why we want to talk about prayer today. Because we need his peace. Amen. He's the God of peace. And I also want He's to God make an announcement. Jesus said my house will be called a house of prayer. Yeah. So from here on, uh, through, especially through the end of this year, we're going to open up at 930 on Sunday mornings. Band will be rehearsing. You'll see the team walking around, still getting things done. But we're going to open up the auditorium right here for a time of prayer. I would encourage you to come, 930. It is the sweetest time. And it, you also get a, a, you get a, you get a pre-show to what's going to be happening to during, during the worship. worship. Yeah. It's just Twice. a great time to come. And I would encourage mm-hmm. you to have people that come and will lay hands on every seat. They'll pray. And it's a time to, and I really think it's a great time to get your prayers off of you because you're praying for God to do something for mm-hmm. other people that are going to show up on, on Sunday morning. Yeah. Let's all stand. Okay. Need some help off the stools? <laughs> I told him, I said, you're not short like me. Like, I can't touch the ground. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, we've gone a little over our time, and I'm going to blame that on Kristen. Okay? Okay. Not really. We haven't. I enjoyed this. Thank you for doing this. Yeah, it was fun. Oh, Wasn't that great? I didn't make you too nervous, did I? I'm proud of you. So for you note takers, uh, if you missed one of those peas, come up to me. I'll give them to you, and I'll... Chris and I want to meet you at the, end of, at the end of service after we pray over you. We're going to be out by the info bar. If you're a first-time guest or we've never met you, it's amazing the people that I meet every Sunday. And uh, I'm like, first time here, and I've been coming for a few months. Uh, I always feel bad. So I, I want to meet you. We'd, we'd like to get to know you. Also, we'd like to encourage you today, if you've never given Jesus your life, to pray the most important prayer that you'll ever pray, speaking of prayer. He says, if you will confess with your mouth, believing in your heart that he's the resurrected Lord, that you will be saved. That's a prayer that's answered immediately. You don't have to wait on that one. You don't have to wait till you get it all right. It's answered right then and right there. I would encourage you to pray that prayer today. Or if you want to recommit your life to Jesus, you've, you've been a believer, but you've walked away. Today is a great day to invite him back into your life. He said, I stand at the door, and I knock. All you got to do is come open it, and I'll come in and hang out with you. We'll have supper together. I'd like to lead you in that prayer. If you're watching online, won't you just join with us? Hills family, let's pray it together. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for your word. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for the blood that you shed for me. Today, I confess that I am not good enough, that I need you in my life. I pray that you would forgive me of all of my sins. I pray that you would cover me with your grace. Come on, this is important. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Empower me to live a Christ-led life. I pray these things in your name, in Jesus' name. Come on, let everybody say amen. Hills family, let's celebrate with these folks that prayed this prayer. Amen. Hey, look at me. If you prayed that prayer, I'd love for you to go out by our info bar. 
And we have a book for you, a resource called Fresh Start with God. We want to give this to you. If you need a Bible, I'm sure we got one of those for you as well. We're so glad you joined with us. All of our Hills family, make sure you, you give today as you leave or give online. That helps us to continue doing what, what we're doing. Fall Fest coming up October 29th. And also, don't forget to join a group. If you'd like to join one of our Hills groups, they're happening right now. All that information can be found out at the info bar. Once again, would you thank Pastor Kristen for just word today? It was so good. May the Lord bless you, keep you, make his face shine upon you. I pray he blows your mind with his best blessings this week. We'll see you next Sunday right here at 1030. God bless.